Good evening everybody. In this video I'm going to offer you my interpretation of the infamous Bible story. I suggest that the story of the Garden of Eden symbolises an archetypal situation which we have all personally lived through. To understand the story of Adam and Eve I think it's essential to understand the principle of the Tao. Uh, this again is more evidence that the divine parents were once recognised worldwide and that the Bible contains much pagan and alchemical content. I would suggest that the Garden of Eden is an allegorical representation of an archetype, so it's essentially a script which is played out countless times uh, across reality. This is the same archetype as Lucifer's fall from heaven, Sophia's fall from the Pleroma, it's Pandora's box and it's many other stories too. They're all symbolising the same thing, which is the temptation to sin, which is to go against the natural order. It is to decide to turn against God's law and follow your own desires instead. And we've all personally done this. So despite what some religions believe, we're not bound by the actions of two people long ago. This happens every day inside all of us. Um, if we are Adam and Eve and we made their mistake, then that means that we also have the power to undo it and go back to paradise. So it's all in our own hands. We have free will. The story contains several symbols, and so I'm just going to explain what I think those are. The Garden of Eden itself is representing the natural order. It's how things should be, according to God's law, essentially. Adam represents the yang mind of reason, which is the conscious mind, and Eve represents the yin mind of survival, which is the subconscious mind. The serpent is goddess yin, she's the teacher, she is Satan, so that's you know, commonly understood. Um, and the knowledge of good and evil is, is morality, so that's not really a symbol, it's more of a definition. And the apple is ideology, so that's a false morality, which is the same as immorality. So who are Adam and Eve? Well, they represent the two god minds of yang and yin, the masculine and feminine principles. We all contain both of these principles, so they are inside you. Yin, which is Eve, is the lower self, the reptilian brain of self-preservation and survival. It's the selfish, instinctive mind of the child that is consumed with physical needs and urges. It's the ignorant, inexperienced mind of belief and it's founded on fear and insecurity. It's the default mind we're all born with that helps us to survive, especially when we're small and weak. Yang, or Adam, is the higher self of reason and intelligence. It's the parent mind of altruism. Uh, it protects and provides for the child. It's the mind of knowledge and experience, and we have to develop it by our own efforts as we grow up. But everyone has the ability to reason and use logic. That's how we learn to understand the principles and rules of our environment. Even babies use logic to make sense of things, so everyone's got it. Eve means beginning, because while Yang is eternal, Yin is finite. She is the creation. So... Yin began to exist, but Yang had no beginning. So this is why we use, or um, well, the Bible uses the name Eve to differentiate between the two. The natural order. Um, in the course of a person's life, they will naturally change from being predominantly in the Yin mind as a child to being predominantly in the Yang mind as an adult. Yin, the child, becomes Yang, the parent. That's the natural order, and that's the law. Yang leads and yin follows. Yang is will and yin is matter. So this means that the will and mind should lead the body and not the reverse. When the mind is led by the body, then the human becomes lower than an animal and takes on a demonic nature. Animals don't have the ability to reason, so there's no fault in them if they don't. They're innocent because they can't know the truth. They're not aware of any evil that they do. Humans, on the other hand, do have the ability to reason and they also have a conscience. So we know if we're doing evil, um, but we choose to follow our base animal urges instead anyway. Humans knowingly reject their true nature, so they're not innocent. They know what they're doing. The Garden of Eden describes how God's natural order was abandoned by mankind, and by all humans individually, you and I. It explains what we did wrong in quite clear terms. So the devil tempted Eve with the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, the knowledge of good and evil is morality. God's morality is real and objective, and all humans have the sense of conscience, which informs us of it. Ideology, on the other hand, is a man-made system of morality, which people use to override God's true morality, and pretend it doesn't exist. 
Ideologies are selfish conveniences that people use to justify immoral behaviour. That's all they are, that's the only value that they have. So Eve was tempted to abandon God's morality for an ideology which suited her ego, her emotions and her selfish purposes. In other words, the yin mind of emotion and physical survival inside you is offered something it likes, something that makes you feel good about yourself. For example, that you don't have to work to be a good person. You know, usually the ideology tells you because you already are a good person. Well, you just have to do some very simple things and you know, that makes you so. It encourages you to indulge in the sin of pride. And pride is a bit like the king of the sins. For example, the climate change religion. This appeals to people not because it's logical, but because it makes people feel like they're superior to others, i.e. they're the only ones who really understand the truth and believe the scientists who are, you know, the saviours, essentially. Their noble mission is to save the planet and all the ignorant savages are just carbon footprints that have to be eliminated. And that would be you and I, I guess. It makes them feel like they don't have to make any personal efforts to be better people because they are already so compassionate and they recycle. You know, so what more could they do? What more could they be expected to do? The emotional hooks are very similar to Christianity, i.e. all your work was done by someone else, i.e. Jesus, and you're superior to other people because you believe in Jesus. So the general pattern is if you believe X, that makes you a good person and you can ignore your conscience because you're already saved. So this is Eve, who is the ego, being offered the apple being offered an ideology which appeals to her. So the devil offers the apple of ideology to Eve, the lower self, and he says, you shall be like God, in, at least in the Bible. And all ideologies offer the same kind of enticement, that you're free to make up your own morality, uh, you're free to do as you please without the constraints of God's law. To think you can invent moral laws to suit yourself is to see yourself as God. It's rebellion against the Creator, and it is the story of Lucifer. And the logical conclusion of it is, do what you will. It's the Satanist creed. So Eve leads and Adam follows. Unless you already know that Yang offers and Yin chooses via understanding the Tao, and that Yang leads and Yin follows, then a major part of the symbolism of the story will be missed. By offering, Satan is attempting to make herself Yang to Eve. She wants to be the provider. This is very important because it's defining the relationship between them. Because the Tao defines relationship, you can't understand relationships without it. Which is why it's such a tragedy that people in the West uh, are so reluctant to get their heads around this. Anyway, by accepting the offer, a, a legal contract is created and Eve agrees to be Satan's receiver, which is the same as a follower. Um, everything, has, everything has free will. We all have free will. All things that have been created have free will. It's the first principle of reality and consent is always required. If you agree to an offer someone makes, especially if you're expecting something in return, then you have made yourself yin in that relationship. They are the provider of direction, or resources perhaps as well, and you are the receiver. Eve, the lower self or ego mind, is naturally yin to Satan, the goddess. The ego is the yin mind. And so the natural order is not broken at this stage. Eve did nothing wrong. She is behaving 100% according to her nature. Eve, naturally, being herself, now offers the ideology to the higher self of the reasoning mind. And she says, oh, I like this. Can I have it? In God's natural order, the yang mind is in charge. Um, yang, which is will, directs, and yin, which is body, follows. You know, your mind tells your body what to do, and that's the way it should be. But the story explains that the natural order was reversed and the genders were swapped. Eve offers the apple to Adam, thus attempting to become Yang to him, and Adam now has a choice. And sadly, Adam, the reasoning mind, accepts it, thus making itself yin to the urges of ego. And this is the mistake that caused the fall. Um, it was 100% Adam's fault, <laughs> if you like. Um, it was our conscious failure. It was the failure of our conscious minds to reject the egotistical ideologies that our subconscious mind likes. You know, we're offered these things, we could reject them, we have the choice, um, Adam lives within us, we will have logic. And Adam should have said no, our reasoning should reject ideologies and sins, because uh, ideologies are based on sins, um, they're kind of the same thing, uh, and you know, we shouldn't embrace them. 
So now we have the situation in which yin offers and yang follows. We have yin behaving like yang and yang behaving like yin. The natural roles assigned by God have been reversed. The natural order has been inverted. God's law of justice is no longer being followed and the goddess's law of the jungle is predominant. And this is the reason for the fall, and it is the fall itself. It's simply that we have all rejected God's natural order to follow our animal instincts. And this is the fall of reason, because reason now becomes um, subservient to the body. And the fall of, uh, okay, so the fall of mankind didn't just happen once, it happens in every individual during our lives. We all make the same mistake of believing things because they make us feel good, instead of seeking the truth, which is what Jesus taught even if it conflicts with our ego and makes us feel bad for a while. The intellect, which is capable of knowing God's objective morality, has been made subservient to the urges of the ego. Uh, man's relatively powerful intellect has been made the tool of Satan, the yin mind. And mankind now uses its relatively great gifts for selfish reasons, and it serves the goddess of destruction in its ignorance. Most folk will use reason to find ways to get sex, drugs, money or status, whatever, but, you know, paradise on earth for all people, yeah, they're not so much bothered about that. They won't bother using their reason to bring that about. So the story of Adam and Eve describes how we've all individually taken on ideologies for selfish, egotistical purposes. And in so doing, we have debased ourselves lower than the animals by, by denying our true God-given nature. The stone the builder refused. Um, humans have the huge privilege, amongst all the creatures, of having access to the mind of God. You know, this is, it's huge, guys. We all have a conscience which tells us God's will. We're given this priceless gift because we are made to be the protectors of all life on earth. But now we've become nature's enemy by our own choices, and we no longer serve the function we were designed to perform. This is a tragedy. This is an extremely dangerous situation for us to be in. The foundation stone of humanity is truth and reason, and without it we are nothing, we're less than nothing. When we reject reason, we reject humanity itself. Truth can't be divided, and to refuse a whole truth is to accept a lie. Um, the man who builds his mind on the shifting sands of ego will lose it. This is why I think this Veritopia stuff is so important, and it's so telling that people just have no time for it. You know, I mean, even if I'm wrong, guys, um, you should be able to point out the flaws in it and tell me. You know, out of care for me, because, you know, at the end of the day, you, you must uh, think I'm deluded if you, if you disagree with me. So why wouldn't you try and help a fellow man to find the truth? Anyway, you can't have science without God, because God is the whole of reality, and nature serves his purpose. And this is why Earth has become so hellish, because everyone has reversed the natural order within themselves. They're led by their bodily urges and emotional desires, and their intellect is only allowed to serve those aims. The hell inside people is then reflected in the world outside. So the location of the Garden of Eden is primarily inside you. Um, it symbolises everything being in harmony with the natural order. And if it exists inside us, then it will exist outside too. Um, but it has to exist inside us before it can exist outside. If um, you have a disordered mind, you can't create harmony. The Garden within is your own internal order, your own mind. If it's in harmony with natural law, it'll be paradise. If it's not, it'll be hell. If you'd like to return to paradise, you just have to exercise your will over your feelings and, as Jordan Peterson would say, clean your room. Only this is referring to your internal room. It's spiritual hygiene as opposed to material hygiene. If our internal order is inverted, then we can't create an ordered world. An inverted mind will create an inverted world, and that's what we see around us today. As Albert Einstein said, problems cannot be solved with the same mind that created them. So, anyway, that's my view of the story. The point of the story is to convey the mechanism by which we have all fallen from grace, and therefore the mechanism by which we can all regain that grace, by which we can re-enter paradise. Yeah, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it interesting. Please let me know, leave a comment. Um, and I'll catch you soon. Take care, guys.